Today, I'm reviewing a portable projector by Xjimmy called the Halo Plus. It's a follow-up to the Xjimmy Halo, which I named the best portable projector for your money in 2021. I'm Jim Kimball, editor of CordCuttingReport.com, where TV viewers come to get the most out of their streaming services and hardware. Xjimmy did send this in to me free of charge to test out, but this is not a sponsored video. Everything you're about to hear about comes from my own hands-on testing. If you want to read more about me and my review process, head over to cordcuttingreport.com and click on the About tab. After spending about a week with this projector, here's a summary of the five things based on my findings. The video quality on this projector is pretty eye-catching. It has full HD picture resolution and very rich colors thanks to HDR10 support. It runs most of the major streaming apps in the US with the exception of Netflix. The projector runs on Android TV 10, one of the latest versions that you also see in mid-range smart TVs, Walmarts, on streaming device and the NVIDIA Shield. Google Chromecast is built into the projector, so you can cast apps, pictures, and videos from a smartphone or tablet. With Google Assistant, you can quickly call up free movies from a favorite actor or director, and it'll pull up all your choices from the streaming apps that you've already downloaded. The Halo Plus is best for use in darkened rooms or if you're outdoors, that means using it at dusk. Because of its software and some of the features on the remote, it functions much like a portable TV. I was projecting a screen between 120 to 130 inches during my testing. Let's talk about how to set up this projector, and then I'll give you my assessment on design and overall performance, including brightness, contrast, color, and audio quality. Setting up the projector is pretty easy. If you have an Android smartphone, you can quickly sync the projector to your Google account, and that will pull up any streaming apps that are already associated with your Google account. If you have an iPhone, no sweat. You can just sign into your Google account and that'll kick off the setup process. If you already have a smart TV or a streaming device that runs on Android TV, a projector will pull in those apps that you're already using on those devices and sync it with the projector. You can later link this projector to your Google Home account if you want to use this independently as a Bluetooth speaker for streaming music. Once the setup is complete, you can start customizing the apps on your home screen. Before I forget, before you use the projector for the first time, you want to plug it in and charge up the battery to 100% before you start using it without the adapter. Just like when you get a new smartphone with a lithium ion battery, you want to charge it all the way up before you really start using it. That way you have a good strong battery that lasts you in the months ahead. You can put the Halo Plus on a table or any flat surface. It has a hinge style stand to tilt up the front of the projector and there's a universal tripod fitting on the bottom. The most impressive thing I found with the Halo Plus was the automatic keystone correction. It adjusts vertical and horizontal angles on the screen every time you set it up. So even if you have the projector pointed at a wall and it's not completely head on, it's a little bit at an angle, the projector will automatically adjust itself so you have an even picture. You can even make manual adjustments afterward to fine tune the four corners of it. The projector performs an autofocus every time you turn it on. There is a switch on the bottom of the remote control that controls auto and manual focus if you need to. By the way, if you like these kinds of reviews or you think this video is helpful, please hit the like and subscribe button and help me grow this channel. So the remote control is gonna be the primary way that you control the projector. It looks and feels a lot like a remote control to a streaming TV device. It's powered by a pair of AAA batteries there's a volume rocker on the bottom. There's home and back buttons above it. A navigation wheel in the center helps you get around the menus. There are buttons for power up top, Google Assistant. This is a menu key button. You can switch your inputs if you're using a different streaming device or a game console. 
and your settings button is right here. The Halo Plus stands six and a half inches tall and it weighs about three and a half pounds. The case of the projector has this sort of metallic look to it, but it's actually a hard plastic and it feels like a very solid build in the hand. There's a HDMI port in the back for streaming TV and gaming options. There's also a USB port for connecting a thumb drive or external hard drive. There's audio output if you want to connect additional speakers. You can control the volume with these two buttons and play and pause with this button at the top of the projector. The projector can do double duty as a Bluetooth speaker and that's pretty handy if you're traveling and you want to take some entertainment with you. These are two 5 watt Harman Kardon speakers. The Wi-Fi in this is dual band, which means 2.4 and 5 gigahertz connectivity. For this particular review, I did not test how far away I could use this from my router, but I can tell you last year when I was testing the Xtreme Halo, I had it in my backyard, more than 30 feet away from my router, and I was able to stream live TV and some movies without any problems. Xtreme says the Halo Plus has 16 gigabytes of internal memory. But one thing to keep in mind with that is the Android TV software does use some of that memory. So I found after I downloaded about 15 different apps, I had about nine gigabytes left. In terms of portability, the Halo Plus is small enough to fit into a backpack or a travel bag, but often I find myself handling it and carrying it around with two hands. When you pick it up, you'll definitely feel that the weight in the projector is, is more toward the bottom. So let's talk about performance. This projector is very bright for its size. It's 900 lumens. It's 100 lumens brighter than the Xtreme Halo. If you're running this just on battery power, it will be a little bit dimmer. So most of the time, I prefer to use this projector just with an extension cord. But if you're in a situation where you can't do that, I think you'll still be very happy with the picture quality and the brightness. So while I was examining picture quality, I watched some live TV on my Sling TV app. I also watched a couple episodes of Reacher on Amazon Prime. I checked out some of Revenge of the Sith on Disney Plus and a little bit of Kingpin on Pluto TV. One thing I noticed when I was using Amazon Prime and Disney Plus is that the projector was picking up and using the 4K version of the movie or TV show. Now, my picture resolution was still 1080p, but I can tell you the colors I was getting from HDR10 support was very noticeable. So if there was a scene that was taking place outside, things like sunshine on a person's face just added a lot of dimension to the picture that you wouldn't typically see in just regular HD resolution. By the way, when I was testing this projector indoors, I had it about 10 feet away from the wall that I was projecting on. So that gave me a screen size of a little over 120 inches. Typically, I prefer to test these projectors outdoors as well with my projector screen, but I'm shooting this video in March and with plenty of snow still on the ground, my yard isn't quite ready yet for a movie night. The contrast on this was very good. While digging into the picture settings, I found that you can slightly customize the brightness. I kept the overall brightness at 10, but I did tweak my red, green, and blue settings and tone them down slightly, and I thought that just made a better picture for my eyes. Things like color output can be pretty subjective, but I was glad to see that I had the choice of adjusting things like individual colors because that's certainly not something that I've seen a lot in portable projectors. I thought the speakers were very good. Uh, the audio is crisp and clear. I would have liked to have had a little more bass, but it certainly wasn't distracting at all when I was watching TV shows and movies. The fan was also very quiet, which is an important metric to me personally, because there's nothing more distracting than a loud, noisy fan when you're trying to enjoy yourself and get immersed in a good movie or TV show. The Xtreme Halo Plus debuted at 
$850. I've routinely seen these projectors go down in price once or twice a year during various sales. It is on the pricier side in the portable projector market, but I do think you're getting a lot of quality here for what you're paying. If you think you're in the market for a portable projector and you're looking around, and if you're not quite sold on spending over $1,000 for a 4K projector, I would definitely consider the Halo Plus. As I said, the high dynamic range was very noticeable to me compared to a typical high definition picture, but I'm looking forward to testing this projector some more later this year once the weather gets a little bit better and I can take it outside. Thanks again for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you want to follow more of the work I do, you can sign up for the newsletter. I'll leave a link in the comments section. But probably the better way to follow me these days is to add the cord cutting report to your Google News Feed so you'll get all the latest reviews, how-to guides, and other things happening on the site right when they're published. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.